expressed an opposition to accept them as natural. The question is, Will they ever become I'm not a second-class citizen. I demand the right to be legally married. For hundreds of years, queer people have struggled to be seen as normal people in society. They were seen as vulgar and almost beastly because they wanted to marry people of the same gender. Even though it wasn't their fault they were gay or lesbian, they still have been discriminated against for many decades. After Stonewall and the gay liberation movement of the 60s and 70s, the gay community has been fighting for equal rights for hundreds of years. Be able to call him my husband is something that has worldwide recognition. I just want to say how incredibly proud we are of our parents. We love them, we love our family, and we look forward to the day when we will be treated equally, just like our neighbors do. Finally, in the early 2000s, the movement for marriage equality started. In the spring of 2002, the court case Goodrich versus the Department of Public Health took place. It would ultimately decide whether gay marriage was legal in Massachusetts or not. Seven same-sex couples who had previously de been denied marriage license decided to stand up with GLAAD, or gay and lesbian advocates and defenders, to argue against the Department of Public Health. After legalizing gay marriage in Massachusetts on May 4th, 2003, many things changed. Same-sex couples could now marry in Massachusetts something that broke barriers for the rest of the country. Massachusetts legalizing gay marriage broke barriers and became a model for the rest of the country to take the same actions. In the early spring of 2001, GLAD sued the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. So, the first court case deciding whether same-sex marriage was named Goodridge versus the Department of Public Health. The first hearing was held in March of 2002. All of the plaintiffs were same-sex couples that had been in long-term same-sex relationships and had been denied marriage licenses since early 2001, some plaintiffs even being the parents of their own children. The hearing in 2002 didn't end up the way they would have hoped. The Superior Court Judge Thomas Connolly had ruled in favor of the Department of Public Health, explaining that the request would be directed to the legislator and not the courts. After this disappointing decision, the seven same-sex couples immediately appealed to the Supreme Judicial Court. The court hearing was held on March 4th, 2003. A woman who worked for GLAAD named Mary Bonato argued their case. The Massachusetts Attorney General, Tom Riley, wanted to stick with the public interest, explaining that if couples could not procreate or reproduce, they shouldn't be able to marry. Another hearing was held on November 18th, 2003, and it was finally decided. With a 4-3 to three vote, it was decided to be unconstitutional to not let the same-sex couples marry. After being together for almost 20 years, Tanya McCloskey and Marcia Kadich became the first legally married same-sex couple in Massachusetts on May 17, 2004. Tanya and Marcia were not the only same-sex couple to get married that day. Following their marriage, 77 other same-sex couples got legally married that day. A Boston Globe survey discovered that about 50% of the couples that had applied for a marriage license on the first day had been together for almost two decades. After same-sex marriage was officially recognized in the following years, states like California, New Mexico, Oregon, Washington, and New York officially recognized same-sex marriage as legal. Although a lot of states followed Massachusetts in legalizing gay marriage, states like Alabama and Texas never actually decided to legalize gay marriage on their own. On April 28, 2015, the Supreme Court heard hearings for the Obergefell v. Hodges case over whether or not same-sex marriage is a legal right in all of the United States but they're not going to avoid it for long. On October 8th, they will be deciding a case about sex. The argument was that it was the 14th Amendment, more specifically the Equal Protection Clause. Finally, on June 26, 2015, it was decided the 5-4 to four vote that gay marriage was in fact a constitutional right. With same-sex marriage legal now everywhere in the United States, gay people would finally get the rights a normal married couple would have, including better tax benefits, health insurance benefits, prenuptial agreements, and especially having an easier time adopting children. James Obergefell, one of the main plaintiffs, was fighting to put his name on his husband's death certificate. After the case, he said, Today's ruling from the Supreme Court affirms that millions across the country already know what to be true in our hearts, that our love is equal. 
President Obama even praised the Supreme Court's decision, calling it a victory for America. Throughout the country on this day, avid supporters went to social media, pride parades, and public rallies to celebrate this new victory. The White House was lit up in the uh, LGBT colors. So the White House was- It was so beautiful. It was same-sex marriage in Massachusetts has now been legalized for over 15 years and four years for the entirety of the U.S. Studies now show that a little over 9% of the population of the U.S. is in the LGBTQ plus community. In 2006, it was found that 51% of Americans said that homosexuality should be accepted, and when the same survey was taken in 2016, it was found that 63% of Americans said that it should be accepted. In a study done by McGill University, it was found that the anti-gay bias in the U.S. decreased at double the rate when same-sex marriage was legalized. Also, in a study done by the Human Rights Campaign, it shows that 4 out of 10 LGBTQ youth say that the place where they live is not accepting of gay people. If Goodrich versus the Department of Public Health did not end in favor of the LGBTQ plus community, same-sex marriage could still be only a dream for many queer people in Massachusetts and all around the U.S. We want a world so that everyone could be equal no matter what. There is still a lot of work to be done, but Massachusetts broke the barrier between what people thought love should be and what love really is. Love is love for everyone and anyone. There are no restrictions because the limit of love is endless. A phone call came and we had just talked to Glad a little bit and talked to Mary Bonato. And she called and I heard Julie pick up the phone and then Julie shouted and said, it's Mary Bonato. She wants to know if we want to be lead plaintiffs. And I shouted from the bathroom where we were splashing, what does that mean? And she said, I don't know, our name gets on it. So <laughs> that was that. So we had no idea. And that felt like it had been 10 minutes ago, and look what happened. And you've gotten married in front of the whole freaking world. I think that it did speak to how we were supposed to be perfect. The lawsuit led to the landmark decision to allow same-sex marriages. I just, you know when you're walking through a crowd and you're sort of, you're in a, in a heightened emotional state, and I saw, I remember seeing like faces going behind me and then they brought us up through the bowels of City Hall um, into this room. It was walls of um, reporters literally scaffolding up and be, be in front of us and behind us. And the whole thing was, was kind of, uh, it was really kind of magical. In the meantime, these Massachusetts couples are focused on celebration, exchanging their vows, for better and for worse, and vowing to fight on. One or both of us could have really messed the other one up, and we didn't, if we didn't have marriage. People of my generation, I think, are a lot more accepting of things, just because they were around, much of their lives has been spent in a state where gay marriage has been legal. You know, it, it makes me feel like, look back again on how much we accomplished and how much, you know, every plaintiff accomplished and every person in Massachusetts accomplished.